I kept, you know, having this little voice monitoring what I was thinking even, let alone doing, let alone writing the question. I couldn't barely begin with a thought, worrying what other people might think of the questions that I chose. Um, and then I had to kind of get rid of that and think about, well, if I were being interviewed, uh, what questions might I be, um, you know, excited to answer because there's things that I've chatted about with my friends. I like this question because I do have this really varied background and I've always felt a bit self-conscious because people are sometimes like, oh, where are you from? And most people are like, oh, I'm from Lancashire. Oh, I'm from Russia or something. And I'm like, oh, well, ever since I was three months old, I've been traveling with my mom over in the States. I went to Australia, I went to Spain, I went to Africa. I was sent to boarding school in England. I went to Bolivia. Um, and then within each of those countries, I was moving around and then there was on top of that kind of holiday traveling, my grandparents were great travelers and they would whisk me off with them. And I didn't, you know, didn't even have schooling in Zanzibar. But that is my life. That is a part of who I am. That is, that is real. I'm, I'm not, you know, if someone asks you oh, where are you from or who, you know, wh what are you, who are you? I can't just give a quick answer. I can't just say, oh, because I, I was born in London. But I, I'm not, I don't feel British. When we moved to Zanzibar, my stepfather was away working on a project somewhere. And so it was just me and my mum and my baby brother. And my mum missed her husband. And I would make up stories that I would act out and tell her to make her laugh. And I read a lot and I went off into my own little imaginary world and when I did watch films I, I was transported into another place and I wanted to be part of that. The sort of people who perhaps are not readily recognised but the work that they do I respect and who perhaps are also slightly quirky and I think that I probably fit in a little bit more into that. Joan Cusack, Joan Allen, the sort of women that if I had a, a similar body of work to them I'd feel great about that. It's a little bit of a challenge. I stopped acting and went into counselling for ages, studying it and then working as a, as a counsellor. And it was, um, yeah, it was amazing. But when we met uh, about five years ago and he got to know me, he's like, well, you know, I think you need to go back. And um, he, he kept at it. He was like, no, I really believe that you should. And so, um, yeah, I went back to it about three years ago. Um, yeah, went straight into a... A film called Do Elephants Pray, which is took forever in post-production. Um, Paul Hills, who was the director, and Johnny Han, the writer, did an amazing job, you know, keeping that going on smallest amount of, of, of budget. Um, really tough for them, and, and now it's just won four awards. Well, the short answer is no, I've not only worked as an actress, I have professionally worked as all sorts of different things behind the camera, behind the scenes, and I've thought it was wonderful. And as an intern, I worked for Hubbard's, Hubbard Casting, and as an actor, it was invaluable, without a doubt. Half the time you go in to a casting, you leave thinking, oh, I didn't say this line correctly, I wasn't friendly enough, I was too friendly, I was this, I was that. And half the time, you know, when I was there listening to the process that some of the directors would, would go through when they talked about the people that they wanted, we need someone who's a little bit more famous. We need someone who's taller, shorter, blonde. Oh, this won't, you know, it was little things, li li little things. It wasn't because, oh, she was so hopeless. You know, that was very rare. So for myself as an actress, going into castings, I wanted to be a lot more confident, a lot more comfortable. I wanted to be a bit more financially independent. I wanted to do work that I feel fulfilled by and proud of. I wanted to do work that other people praise and recognize. I want to, I want to win an award. I want to win an award. I want to be like, oh, I won, I won something. Lots of people think that I'm really good at something. I, I really, that would delight me. I'd be so thrilled and I'd only need to win one. A really nice big one, a fancy one, just one. And I'd feel like, oh, that's it, you know. Oh my gosh, this is really all about me. It's really fun and special. 
Um, and it would be incredibly gratifying to have a lot of people enjoy the work that you did. To have a lot of people say, oh, you know, great job. I'd be like, wow, I'm, I am really good at something. You know, I really want to be good at something. <laughs> and I think that I am good at acting, but it's, um, it's hard to... If you're really good as a secretary, and I'm really good as a secretary, I've had some really good secretarial jobs. I couldn't do it all the time, but I have some, I've had some really good ones, and I've done some really good work that's been really appreciated. And I'd like, and I, and I know that I'm good at that. And I've also done some counselling work that I'm really proud of, and I've had some, you know, um, great feedback not only from clients but obviously when I was training for my teachers from the groups that I was involved in that I was working in from my supervisors and it feels really rewarding to work at something and develop your skills in a way that you can use you can serve with and I'm just I've not been able to use the skills that I have as an actress enough for me to feel fulfilled by it. There are moments in my life when I look back that I've been really happy with the work I've done, I'm really proud of it, even if it's, you know, been at school, my graduating play, and it was terrific. That, that doesn't take, it doesn't matter if it's not been seen by millions of people, it's just been seen by the people who are invited to your graduation play. If you do something that you're really proud of that has an impact on people, that's rewarding, that's fulfilling. Um, but I, it's just the nature, isn't it, of the, of the industry. If you don't do enough that impacts enough people, it's really hard to get um, enough work because the more you impact a lot of people, the more finances there are behind you. The more finances there are behind you, the more you're likely to, you know, producers, executive producers, people who are investing money in are going to want to invest money with, with you in it. Um, and I don't think I'll ever be in, in a position where I'd be able to, you know, head the film, bankroll it. But that's, um, as much as that would be, you know, wicked, it, it's not a burning desire of mine. My burning desire is, is, is to just to work. When I wrote this question, I was only thinking about people in, you know, film world, theatre world, whatever. But as I read it now, I was like, oh gosh, I admire quite a few people. <laughs> so, um, Paul Newman. I think Paul Newman is fantastic. I like not only the charity work that he did later, but um, the long-term relationship he had with Joanna Woodward. He went to my acting school in the States, the Neighbourhood Playhouse. I spent two fantastic years there. The Verdict is one of my favourite, favourite, favourite films, which he did when he was much older and he was really challenged to do that. It was a big challenge for him and I thought he was incredible in it. Um, I think he was handsome, he was sexy, he was, you know, good looking guy. Um, yeah, I admire him a lot. Pedro Almodovar, his film's Spanish director. Some of his films have, have just I remember watching when I was younger and just loving them. You know, Women on the Edge of a Nervous Breakdown is, is for me a real classic. I love it. I had to write this question now. No one's ever going to ask me this question, surely. Um, and uh, I've only ever been asked for an autograph once. I mean, you know, you have family and friends who are like, oh, let's have your autograph. You might be famous one day. But I was working in theatre in Spain and I'd done... Um, some Salon Varieties Theatre in Fuengirola. And uh, I was really young and I'd done some work that I was 
you know, really pleased with and I got some really good reviews for. We took one of our shows to Gibraltar to the, the main theatre there. So it seated like hundreds. That was, you know, a big treat. But it was only after I finished being, I think it was the fairy godmother in a pantomime, that I was walking down the street, you know, a couple of weeks after the show had finished, and um, some, I think it was like a, a mother and her son or something, but you know, a, a, little, a small family, you know, not lots of, there weren't lots of people together, just like a husband and wife and their kid. And, and they were like, oh, you were the fairy godmother in the <laughs> to mine. can we have your autograph? <laughs> I felt really chuffed. I was like, yeah, all right then. It was really sweet. It's the only time I've ever been asked. And it was for being a fairy godmother, and there I was. I think I had a blue wig on and a big pink poofy dress. I don't know how the heck they even recognised me. Oh, it was really nice to be asked. Yeah, I guess if something came up and someone said, oh, you've got this film, but we need to make your teeth whiter, and I think it would be really good if we just did that. I'd probably be hard-pressed to say no, but I haven't done anything yet, and... I'd like to try not to, I suppose. I feel a combination. I feel really kind of chuffed. It's nice to have someone want to know something about you. I feel pleased to talk about some things that mean something to me and that I enjoy thinking about and, and talking about with my family and friends. I feel self-conscious what if I say something silly what if that looks stupid you know yeah what if that's embarrassing I feel um a bit slightly fake because there are some things that I want to say like I, I wanted to talk about some of the films that I'd done but you have to kind of make it happen if you want to, you know, it's, it's a, kind of a funny situation to be in. You kind of want to, and so therefore that doesn't feel totally organic, but it is organic in the sense that it genuinely comes from me. Go to bang the microphone. Yeah, it's, it's real because it comes from me and it's something that I want to talk about. But unless someone's asking me a direct question about the very thing that I want to talk about, I'll have to bring it in somewhere. So then you're kind of making up a, a way to... You know, it's a bit of a non sequitur sometimes. Um, so that that's an odd situation to be in. That that feels slightly kind of awkward to, to you know, to be really eager to mention something and try to find a way in to do it. Um, it's a little tiring being interviewed. My, I feel a bit, my mouth feels slightly dry. And I feel kind of emotionally a bit drained. It's kind of cathartic though as well. I could get used to being interviewed. It could be quite fun.